Hey guys, and welcome back to Medieval. When we last left off, we had uh, gone through Zarek's time machine, and well, wasn't that just a barrel of uh, laughs? Now, OBS Studio has been updated, and there's now a very much improved noise gate built in. So I'm testing that in this episode. Apparently it eats quite a few more CPU cycles, but I think we've got some to spare. It's going to be interesting because the noise gate solution that was in it before was pretty shit. So hopefully it's going to at least cut down some of the background noise. So if uh, you can hear my controller and keyboard and that kind of stuff, you shouldn't be able to hear that now. Uh, which is going to come in very useful in a few months time when I get my new kitties. Anyway, let's go. Zarok's Lair awaits the final battle. Zarok's lair. Zarok may be backed into a corner, but he's got one or two more tricks up his sleeve. Maybe even three. Yeah, well that may be, son. But uh, I'm pretty sure we've got a few tricks up our sleeve as well. Although we have fairly short sleeves. But hey, we've got some of our own Sunny Jim. Right, Dan. Let's depart the train. Let's get our equipment set up. We're going to go loaded with a magical sword because fuck yes we are. Uh, we have lightning bolts ready as well. You know what? Let's go with the lightning bolts. We never thought you'd get this far. Your final encounter with Zarek awaits beyond this mm -hmm. point. He has surrounded himself with his unnatural bodyguards, but you may yet even the odds by calling upon the lost souls collected within your chalice. Place the chalice on the shield at the heart of the arena. Good luck, Sir Daniel Fox. Well, thank you. Lost souls, eh? Yes. Okay, what's in here? A shield. Well, that's a load of old shit. Do we need anything? No. We're good. Right, we're all topped up on health, which is good because we need a lot of health. Uh, in this situation. You ready, Dan? You ready to do this? You ready to go meet your destiny, my son? Oh, let's go, Dan. Let's go. Here's our badass. The Daniel Fortescue. Here to reclaim his name. Well, this looks like a pretty generic looking arena type deal. And that's because it is. This is an interesting boss fight, and uh, there's a lot I like about it, and there's a lot I don't. Anyway, let's go, Dan. Hello, you. Sir Fortescue, my old nemesis. So we meet again. I see that a century spent as worm food has done nothing to diminish your naive obsession with the freedom of Gaonia. Hmm. Undead skelly bags. Well, we can handle them. Although, actually, we can't. Prepare to attack, my warriors. I want the dogs gnawing marrow from those bones within the hour. Mm. Ah! What is that, Fortescue? Your lucky cup. Maybe. Ah, we have warriors of our own. Yes, the more chalices you collect, the more warriors we get. Now, unfortunately, our warriors are slightly weaker than Zarox, but we can top them up with health, although it does cost us our own health. But that's okay. Each one of these that survives will turn into a health vial. So, we don't really want to lose any guys if we can help it. Like so. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Let's keep our soldiers going. Top, top nicely. Excellent. If we can get out of this without losing any of our own dudes, I'll be quite happy. Yes. As the enemies start to crumble. 
Ah, flawless victory. We didn't lose any of our own guys. Excellent. Hmm, Cardock. Well, we shall soon see about that. I think we can make him choke. Well met, Sir Knight. He looks pretty badass, to be honest. Now, this guy is kind of a dick penis man. We have some health vials here that we can grab. There we go. Now, he's going to summon soldiers, which we really don't want him to do. And once we kill what he's summoned, he should ride into the middle like a dick. And whilst he's riding into the middle, we can uh, get some free hits on him. But every time we hurt him, he will do more, yeah, more damage to us and he will summon more soldiers. But that's okay. As you can see, we're doing a good chunk of damage to him. But it does get a little bit ridiculous. But hold, Dan. Hold. Damn it, he's spawning. He's spawning in enemies now. Now, unfortunately, as you may be able to tell by the video, not 100% sure, the frame rate really starts to tank. That poor, old, tired PS4 CPU is really starting to get tired now. Okay, there we go. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. Looks like we just have to survive for X amount of time. Ah, well, this is quite the boss fight. I know that much. Here he comes. Stop you fool and allow me to end this madness. There we go. Bugger. Bugger. Right then, that's it. I've just about had enough of your meddling. Is that so? Well... Time for the showdown. Ah, yes. Uh, Dark? No, not that spell. Come out, you pathetic ponce. Oh. Oh, not right <laughs> now. Aha. Now I have it. You have what, Zarok? Jesus, you actually got uglier. None shall defeat the mighty So prepare to die. Oh, I don't think so. Dan doesn't fear death. He has conquered death once before, and he shall do so again. Now, unfortunately, Zarak has this annoying invincibility shield. So after a while of using his powers he will have to run away and recharge which will be our opening to attack come on you sneaky ugly bastard stop spitting your acid at me that shouldn't really hurt Dan because uh, yeah oh Jesus walked into that one yes that's it Zarok cower in the corner like the dog you are lovely some good damage there Damn it, acid attack, Dan. Think fast. Woof, woof. Nice try. Oh, you actually hit me there. You sneaky little sod. Double hit, triple hit. Dan's wise to it now, Zarok. That's right, cower in the corner, you dog. There we go. How do you like that? Magical sword to the bonce. All right, now he's almost dead. He changes up his uh, attack pattern. Right, let's uh, switch up to something a little bit more long range, shall we? Uh, you know what? Yeah, why not? We'll give the spears a go. Do 100 damage each, so three spears. That's it. Pathetic. Yes, yes you are. Oof. 
well. Bad luck, old man. Well, that was anticlimactic. All that power, and he just needed a massive piece of granite to fall on his brain. Run, Dan, run! Good catch, old friend. And there we go. All of the souls released back into the wilds. Attractive people live in this land of uh, Galimir. That's such a cool shop. All the souls returning. Good work, Dan. You finally live up to your uh, mural there. Dan claims his rightful place in the Hall of Heroes. Good stuff. And he gets his own constellation in the stars. Well, 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 well. That's medieval. Almost. Anyway. We still do have the uh, extra quest to do, which I will start hopefully recording tomorrow. However, I'm going to try and do that all in one video. And we will also check out the last um, entries in the book. But that was always an interesting uh, boss fight. I thought it was what I liked about it was it's multi tiered and it wasn't just the same old, um, you know, three cycles against the first boss, but each cycle gets faster or slightly harder. The boss does more damage. You actually had three separate boss fights in a way that felt pretty good. It wasn't like you had to fight your way through six bosses that you've already fought before. It was actually three new challenges. Um, I don't think the camera really helps you out much, but at the same time it doesn't really matter because as long as you've got all of the chalices and as long as you picked up all of the life bottles, it's actually a rather easy battle. 
But it's a fun battle. And, you know, this isn't really a very long game. You can bust that shit out in probably like five hours. I could go through this game and get everything if I was not commentating and, you know, looking for everything. Um, wait, <laughs> yeah, if I was looking for everything. But without looking at the books and uh, reading all the tool tips and listening to the gargles and watching the cutscenes and stuff like that, you could you really could bust this game out quite quickly. But it's better that um, a game is short but sweet, in my opinion, than uh, a game that drags on and really outlives its welcome, uh, which a few games do. Um, Days Gone came close to that, but uh, luckily with Days Gone, there's a bit of an uptick towards the end. And, uh, yeah, that game kind of uh, comes into its own towards the end when you've got all the weapons and everything. Um, but anyway, that's Medieval. I really enjoyed it. Does this game hold up? I think so. I think if you go into it thinking that this is a budget title, then yes. A budget title, um, essentially it's basically a game that was made 20 years ago and the only difference is it's got a new lick of paint it controls the same it's got all the same issues but if you're aware of that then i think this game really does still hold up it's got an enchanting storyline um it's got a wonderful atmosphere it's got a beautiful world that i want to see more of and i think dan's quite an endearing character in fact all of the heroes are i really would like to see more of them in future games may i wouldn't be opposed maybe uh in a medieval three maybe you could pick another hero hmm? Hmm? Nah, we all want to play as dan don't we but um yeah that's an interesting uh, thought maybe the other heroes could help you out on your quest because you're not trying to redeem yourself anymore you know Dan is one of the chosen few now. So, yeah, that would be quite interesting. But I'm not really sure what else they could do with the universe, apart from a, a new evil attacks Galomir once more, and Dan must rise again. But then, you know, Dan reawakening in the first place in this game was an accident. It was only because he was uh, reanimated with the rest of the... Uh, villagers although for some reason he wasn't reanimated as some evil entity which maybe it was a stroke of luck i don't know maybe i'm thinking too much into this game but it's a really good game and i really want to play it on the playstation 5 just to see if they can clean it up get it to hit that solid 60 fps because it really doesn't often feel like it hits 60 FPS on the PlayStation 4. Whether that's bad optimization or the fact that the CPU in the PS4 is just dog shit. Um, I mean, it was dog shit from day one. Uh, you know, in the X-Bone and the PlayStation 4, they had very capable graphics chips. Mm, good amount of memory, but dog shit CPUs. Which is one of the reasons why I'm quite looking forward to next generation. It's the first time in years and years and years we have balanced systems. Not only do they have a lot of graphical grunt, buckets of RAM, super fast storage, but they've got juicy uh, CPU cores as well. Hmm. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of games we get next gen. Very interesting. Although, Cyberpunk's out soon, and uh, I'm kind of... Really looking forward to that. Anyway. Can we skip this? We can skip this. Oh, yeah. And it just leads us back to Sony Interactive Entertainment. What is quite interesting, and I might do a quick little recap. Yes, 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 yes. yes. A little recap. Um, after we do the next video, or however many videos we have left in this game. Um, I might do a recap of the original game. Just go through the graveyard or something. See how it plays. There's Mr. Spider. So guys, thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.